Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So if you've never used Scratch before, or you're teaching someone else how to use it for the very first time, this is the video for you. Now this is what Scratch looks like the first time you open it up. And maybe the first thing that you notice is this tutorial window. It's sort of this green blue color and it's a fantastic resource. You can follow through the steps and it will give you all of these step-by-step -step instructions on how to do all sorts of things. We're not gonna use it today. We're actually going to press the close button, but if you ever need to get it back again, you just need to press on this tutorial button up here and then you can choose whatever kind of tutorial you want to do. And then you can follow through the steps like this. So I'm gonna close this for now, and I'm gonna give us a tour of everything that we can see here in front of us. First up, this window here is where our game or program is going to happen. We can even press this button here, the four arrows going out, to maximize our game and see it nice and big, and then you can press these four arrows going in to make it small again so we can get to the code and the rest of Scratch. Now, this section here contains all of the characters for our game, which currently is just the one, this cat here, and Scratch calls these characters sprites. We're going to add a new sprite to our game, so hover your mouse here and click on choose a sprite. Now, you can choose whatever sprite you like. I'm going to choose this bear. Whenever you're ready, just click on the sprite that you want to add. And as you can see, we've now got our new sprite in our game. We can even drag these sprites around inside our game window. Also, notice that when we move our sprites around, they highlight up in either blue or purple, and we can even select them like this as well. Remember that for later, it's going to be important. For now, make sure that you've got your cat selected, because this is the first of our sprites that we're going to code. Speaking of code, we are going to get all of our code from these colored categories here off to the left. I'm going to go through a few of them now. Motion, the dark blue category, is all about moving your sprites around. Looks, the purple category, is all about changing your sprite's color, their size, things like that. Sound is all about making sound effects and music. Events, the yellow category, is all about when should things happen. We also have ways of sending messages to other sprites so that they know when things should happen. Control, the orange category, is more about if things should happen. Should they happen more than once? Should we wait until they happen? That kind of thing. Sensing, the light blue category, is all about what sprites can detect. They have senses, just like you and I have senses. We have the sense of sight, the sense of hearing, the sense of touch. The sprites can also sense things. They can sense if we are pressing buttons on our keyboard, or maybe they sense if they touch each other, or if they touch a certain color. Now the green category, operators, is all about maths. But don't panic, the computer will do all of the maths for us. Now there are two more categories variables, this dark orange, and my blocks, this kind of pink red. We're going to come back to these in a later video. So for now, go to events, the yellow category. Now click your mouse button on when green flag clicked and hold it down, then drag it into the middle like this. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit easier. Then we're going to go to motion, the dark blue category, and look for something called change X by 10, and drag that out as well. And can you see there's this shadow? Once we let go, the two pieces will connect together on top of each other like two pieces of Lego. So now we know when something is going to happen. It's gonna happen when we click the green flag and we know what's going to happen. We're going to change X by 10, whatever that does. Now the green flag is the button here and this is what starts our game. Now click it and watch very carefully what happens to the cat. It moves, it moves by about 10, pixels and it's always moving towards the right. Each time we press the green flag, it moves in those 10 pixel steps. Next, go to control the orange category. Look for something called forever, drag that out and put it around this change X by 10. And now when you press the green flag, the cat's going to continually be moving towards the right. 
It's doing this over and over and over and over again, about 20 or 30 times every second. Now, get out an if then. Drag that and make sure it goes inside the forever, but around the change x. This means that now our cat has stopped moving. Even if you press the green flag again, the cat's still not moving. And that's because this change x by 10 will only happen if whatever we put here is true. So in between the if and the then, we are going to put a question. And the answer to the question is either going to be yes or no. And if the answer to the question is ever yes, then we are going to be changing x by 10. And if the answer is no, nothing happens, just like nothing is happening right now. But what question do we ask? Well, let's go to sensing the light blue category and look for something called key space pressed. Now drag that out and you'll notice it's this hexagon shape. And in between our if and our then is a hexagon shaped hole. And if you hover the left side of our key space pressed over, you'll see that the hole lights up with this white outline. And when you let go, it'll go inside. So now instead of our sprite moving forever and ever about 20 or 30 times a second, it's asking a question 20 or 30 times a second. And the answer is either going to be yes or no, depending on whether or not we're pressing the space bar on our keyboard. So try pressing the space bar now and you'll notice your cat moves, but only when you're pressing the space bar. So what direction is our cat moving? They're moving to the right. So let's change this space key into a right arrow key. Make sure you stop your project and start your project again just to make sure all of the code is updated. And now try pressing the right arrow and it worked just like the spacebar did. So let's see if we can put some code to make our cat go left as well. Now we could get this all out again, but let's be lazy. Put your mouse right over where it says if, then right click, not normal click, right click, and you will get the option to duplicate. So normal click on where it says duplicate, and then put this whole duplicated bit of code right here under the forever. So now we've got two identical if then statements. Let's make a change to the second one, shall we? Let's change this right arrow into a left arrow. Now we could try testing this and you'll notice that the right arrow works, but the left arrow doesn't. The left arrow is taking us right. What we need to do is change this 10 underneath where it says left arrow from 10 into minus 10. Now give your code a check and you'll notice you can go left and you can go right. At this point, I want to explain to you what does change X mean? Have you heard of 2D games and 3D games? A good example of a 3D game is a game like Minecraft or Fortnite. It's a game in which you can move in three dimensions. You might in school have done 3D objects and 2D objects. So a 3D object would be like a cube whereas the 2D version of that object would be a square. 2D is flat, and if you've noticed, scratch is flat, it's like a picture. It only has two dimensions. These dimensions actually have names, X and Y. We're changing X, and the X dimension controls left and right. It controls sideways movement. The other dimension, y, controls up and down. So let's see if we can use the y dimension to make our character go up. So again, we're going to duplicate this if. I'm just going to put it right here in the middle, and then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to zoom out as well so you can see all of the code a bit more easily. Let's change this left arrow into an up arrow. Now, this changes X, and we don't want to do that. So take this code and just throw it back to this window here. Then we're going to go to Motion, the dark blue category, and we're going to look for Change Y by 10. We're going to drag that out and put it into the gap, and we're going to give that code a test. Yep, we can move sideways still, and now we can move up, but we can't yet move down. Now, here's a challenge for you. 
pause the video and see if you can make the code that will make the cat go back down again based on what we've done already. Now if you guessed that we copy this code and then change the 10 into a minus 10, you are absolutely right. Don't forget to change the control from up arrow into down arrow. Then let's give that a test and perfect. We've got all four directions of movement. Now let's put some code into our bear as well, shall we? When you click on the bear, you'll notice all the code has disappeared. That's because the code lives in the sprite. So all of this code belongs in our cat sprite, but the bear doesn't have any code yet. This is important to remember. If you ever delete a sprite, you'll lose all of the code that's inside it too. So make sure that you only delete a sprite if you know there's nothing inside it that you need. We're gonna make this bear move around very randomly. So go to events, the yellow category, get out a when green flag clicked, then go to control, the orange category, get out a forever loop, then go to motion, the dark blue category, and get out a glide one second to random position, put that inside the forever, start the project, and the character should start moving around very randomly. They'll go to random parts of the screen and sometimes they'll move fast and sometimes they'll move slow. Now we're going to make it so that if the bear ever catches the cat sprite, it will turn invisible. So go and click on the cat sprite, then go to control, get out an if then, put that in the very bottom of our forever loop, then go to sensing, and look at the top for touching mouse pointer. Drag this out and put it into the gap between the if and the then, but then change where it says mouse pointer into touching bear. Then we're going to go to the purple category looks and get out a hide block. Put that into the gap here and watch what happens when the bear catches the cat, it disappears. Now here's something interesting. If we stop the program and start it again, the cat always stays invisible. The reason for this is that Scratch is actually remembering that the cat's invisible and we haven't told Scratch to make the cat visible again. So let's do that now. Look for a show right here, drag that out. I'm just gonna put it here into the white area because we only want this to happen at the beginning of the game. And what's the beginning of the game? It's when we click the green flag. So get this show and put it right underneath when green flag clicked, but on top of the forever, before our forever loop starts. Now click the green flag again, and you'll notice that the cat reappears, even if the bear does immediately catch it again. And now we have a game. Now the game might be a bit hard. Let's see if we can make it a bit easier. Let's try changing the size of our characters. Just select the character, then you can see we've got size 100. Try changing that number. You can make it bigger or you can make it smaller. And if we make the number smaller, like say 30, the game should become a lot easier. There'll be a lot more space for us to move, a lot more space for us to hide. And remember, these characters might seem very small when the game window is minimized, but if you're playing it maximized, it makes a lot more sense to have the characters to be a bit smaller. Finally, this white background is a little bit dull, so let's change that, shall we? Move your mouse into the bottom right corner, click on choose a backdrop, and you can choose whichever backdrop that you want. I'm gonna go with Castle 2, and let's see what this looks like. This is great. So have a bit of an experiment, change the sizes, maybe change some of the numbers in the code, see if that makes the characters move faster or if it makes them move slower. I hope this has been useful to you if you're new to Scratch. Subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help. I can't answer all the comments like I used to, but if you are an experienced ninja, then instead maybe you could see these comments asking for help and give some of your knowledge, some advice to help some younger and more new coders than you. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.